Welcome to an example of numerical integration. We want to use the midpoint rule with n equals three to approximate the given definite integral. Notice how we're integrating on the interval from one to five, and since n is equal to three, we'll be using three rectangles to approximate this definite integral, and because we're using the midpoint rule, we'll use the midpoint of each subinterval to then determine the function value, which will be the height of each rectangle. So let's begin by determining the width of each subinterval, which is equal to delta x, which is b minus a divided by n, where a and b are the limits of integration. So delta x is equal to five minus one divided by n, which is three. So the width of each subinterval is going to be four-thirds of a unit. Let's take a look at the graph of this. Here's the graph of our function, or the integrand, and because we're integrating from one to five, one will be x sub zero, and since delta x is four-thirds, we can add four-thirds to x sub zero to find the end of the first subinterval. So one plus four-thirds would be somewhere in here. So this would be x sub one. Add four-thirds again would be somewhere in here, which would be x sub two. Add four-thirds again, this would be x sub three. And this is also equal to b, the upper limit of integration. And now because we're using the midpoint rule, let's go ahead and approximate the midpoint of each subinterval. So maybe the midpoint would be somewhere in here for the first subinterval, somewhere in here for the second subinterval, and somewhere in here for the third subinterval. So at these midpoints, we'll now determine the function value, which would be the height of each rectangle. So for this first subinterval, this would be the height of the first rectangle. So the rectangle would look something like this. For the next subinterval, this would be the height of the rectangle. Notice how the function value is negative, so the rectangle actually looks something like this. Because the function value is negative there, we can think of this as giving us a negative area. And then for this last subinterval, the function value would be somewhere in here. So this would be our rectangle. And again, because the function value is negative here, we can think of this as being a negative area. So this area would give us a positive value. These other two would give us negative values. Now let's go ahead and calculate these three areas. Again, delta x equals four-thirds. If we look at this formula here for the midpoint rule, we have the sum of, in our case, i equals one to three, since n is three, of f of x sub i minus one plus x sub i divided by two. This average here gives us the midpoint of each interval, which we then find the function value at to determine the height of the rectangle, then multiply this by delta x, the width of each rectangle. So we already know that x sub zero would be a, or one. x sub one, since delta x equals four-thirds, would be one plus four-thirds, or seven-thirds. x sub two would be seven-thirds plus four-thirds, or eleven-thirds. And x sub three would be eleven-thirds plus four-thirds, which is fifteen-thirds, or just five. Notice how this is b. So the integral from one to five of negative x squared plus two x is approximately equal to, using our formula here, we would have f of, when i is one, we have x sub zero plus x sub one divided by two, which is one plus seven thirds divided by two. This would be the height of the first rectangle times delta x, or four thirds, which is the width of the first rectangle, plus f of, when i is two, we have x sub one plus x sub two divided by two, which is seven thirds plus eleven thirds divided by two times delta x. Again, this is the height of the second rectangle times the width plus f of, when i is three, we have x sub two plus x sub three divided by two, which is eleven thirds plus five divided by two times delta x, which is four-thirds. So now we have f of, this would be one plus seven-thirds, which is three-thirds plus seven-thirds, which is ten-thirds. And then divided by two is the same as multiplying by one-half. Ten-thirds times one-half, simplifying here, 
would give us 5 thirds. So f of 5 thirds times 4 thirds plus, here we have 7 thirds plus 11 thirds, that's 18 thirds, which is 6. 6 divided by 2 is 3. So f of 3 times 4 thirds plus, here we have 11 thirds plus 5. Well, 11 thirds plus 15 thirds would be 26 thirds. And then 26 thirds divided by 2, or 26 thirds times 1 half. Again, this simplifies to 13 thirds. So we have f of 13 thirds times 4 thirds. Now let's go ahead and find these function values. To do this, we'll use the calculator. Let's go ahead and type in the function into y1. So I'll press y equals, and then negative x squared plus 2x. And now I'm going to go back to the home screen, second mode. So to find f of 5 thirds, we can press vars, right arrow, enter, enter. And then instead of f of 5 thirds, we can type in y1 of 5 thirds. And this will give us our function value. So we press enter. We'll convert this back to a fraction by pressing math, enter, enter. So we have 5 ninths which means for this first product we'd have five-ninths times four-thirds plus we'll find f of three. So again, vars, right arrow, enter, enter, then in parentheses three, which gives us negative three. So we have negative three, which I'll write as negative three over one times four-thirds plus f of thirteen-thirds, so again, vars, right arrow, enter, enter, and then parentheses, 13 thirds. Math, enter, enter, negative 91 ninths. Nothing simplifies here, so we have 20, 20 sevenths plus, here we would just have negative four, And here we would have negative 364 twenty sevenths. This will come out to negative 452 twenty sevenths. Or as a decimal approximation, this is approximately negative 16.7407. I hope you found this explanation helpful.